Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, coast to coast, This Week in America. The critically acclaimed romance murder mystery Broken Promises, book two, Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles by Joyce Francis, centers around Julie Stanford, a romance writer who's been called back to Block Island, this time not for a book signing, but to be questioned by the police who are investigating a murder. Joyce grew up, the youngest in a family of six in Delaware, went to college in Connecticut where she earned a B.A. in English literature. She loves writing, cooking, travel, time with her friends, resides in the downtown area of Stamford, Connecticut. Joyce Francis, author of Broken Promises, book two, Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles, our guest on This Week in America. Hi, Joyce. Welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Hi, Rick. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very excited to be here. Thank it you. It is our pleasure, and you do such a nice job with the books, Broken Promises, Book Two, Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles, what we're talking about on the program today. At what point did you realize, you know, I enjoy writing, and I'm pretty good at it as well. When did you decide, I really like writing? I was actually around 10 years old when I really started to develop a love for writing. I used to write short stories and poetry at that time, and I think my romance teen novels that I read pretty uh, avidly and uh, like uh, voraciously over the summers, they kind of inspired me to want to pursue a writing career. Um, interestingly enough, uh, it's actually a part-time role for me right now. Soon, hopefully, one of these days to be a full-time role. I, I, it's, it's a love of mine. It's been a passion of mine, like I say, for my whole life. Well, yeah, it's interesting how many people you talk to where this begins at a very early age. Did you have family encouraging you to read and write teachers that encourage this process along the way? Yes. When I was, uh, I had some teachers, uh, I remember some English teachers when I was a child, I would say in junior high school that were very inspired. They were like my motivating factors, I would say. And I, I really think that they played upon me very well at that young age, as well as even I was in college, one of my college professors of English, he was also very inspiring to me. And uh, I, I would say that there's been a few instruct teachers, professors that have motivated me through my life. And, and my mother always liked to read. And that also was something else that I, I think that that also kind of encouraged me to want to, you know, to read and yes. I'll read a lot. Joyce Francis, our guest on the program, talking about her book, Broken Promises, Book Two, Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles. I love what you've done in this book. I love, uh, I, I love Black Island. I love the characters. What was the inspiration for this book? Actually, it, this kind of came to me on a whim. And many of my stories actually are coming to me, um, whim and a dream. <laughs> I'll wake up in the middle of the night sometimes with these ideas. It, it, it sounds crazy, I know. And I think also that everyone's experienced some kind of heartbreak in their life. So this was kind of a story that maybe started as that way, but it kind of took on a life of its own. I mean, I, I think that's really what happened because my first book in this uh, trilogy is actually very a very small book. And my first attempt to, you know, writing a, a novel, and it, it was very, it's a very small book. The second one, of course, it's literally, I mean, it's just taken off. And I'm currently, you know, working on the third book, in fact. But it's, it, it's just that I, I think that the uh, inspiration is more just daily life, you know, I mean, pretty much. Yes. Where did the idea for Black Island come from? Is there a Black Island or something similar? Well, this is set on Black Island. Uh, I've always loved Black Island. When I was actually married, uh, my former husband and myself, we actually would, would go to Black Island. I love the quaintness and charm of the island. It's kind of one of those places when you go there, it's almost like you never think that anything bad could ever happen. So it almost is like, well, when you start peeling the wallpaper, <laughs> things start coming out. <laughs> what well, they really do, don't they? And when you start peeling, you can't stop. It just keeps coming. We find out, ah, oh, these nice people with the smiles on their faces in Block Island, they have lives, they have stories they're trying to keep uh, secret just like everybody else does. The book is Broken Promises, Book Two, Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles by Joyce Francis, our guest on the program. You'll find the book at Amazon, The Usual Place. I didn't want to give away too much, but I want to ask you about the plot of Broken Promises, book two, Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles. Didn't want to give away too much. Is there any more you can say? to? Because the, when you read the plot, it's like, okay, now I got to go to Amazon and buy the book because I got to find out what's happening here. Give us a little bit of information on the plot line for, for your book. 
Well, the story is about secret loves, hidden agendas, and truths being revealed. This book, again, is a trilogy. We find Julie, of course, back on Block Island to answer questions regarding the murder investigation of a former lover that she had had over 20 years ago. And it, what happens is, is Harry's wife, Harry Wordsworth was the former lover. His wife had um, stolen a boat and Harry is the prime suspect in the murder. However, it's they, as it comes out revealed is foul play was involved. And I don't want to give too much away, but there he is. To, he's the prime suspect. However, when you read the book, things will come out that that you know Harry yes. might not be the actual you know suspect, might not be the the person who actually caused the problem. There's a lot of witch. There is witchcraft in the book. Uh, there is a main coven uh, that comes to play. Julie has a reconnection with a, a former teen summer romance from her summers when her parents used to visit Block Island, who is now actually Harry's lawyer. <laughs> Interesting so, how it's well, all sort of connected there. <laughs> yes, it's so like, Carl wait a minute. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, it's like everything's all connected there, isn't it? It's like really exactly. interesting. Just when you think, okay, uh, Joyce has laid the story out for me, there's another twist and turn along the way that makes it uh, makes it a real page turner. The book is Broken Promises, Book Two: Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles by Joyce Francis. You'll find it at Amazon, the usual places. And as you're reading it, there are some themes there as well that sort of are universal, aren't they? That we all can can relate to. Yeah, I, I would say that the main theme of the story would be a resurgence of growth and the law of consequence. That's interesting. And those are, again, things that, that hook us in and are very relatable. And they make for a, a very fascinating plot, again, with twists and turns that you'll find in, in Broken Promises. I hate, always hate to ask, like, picking your favorite, uh, your, your favorite child, favorite characters. You've done a great job of developing these characters. We fully understand them. You, you bring out in detail who these people are. We feel like we know them. Are there any favorite characters that you have in your book? Well, of course, Julie Stanford, the main heroine, is is you know very dear to me. Uh, she, you know, I admire her focus and her graceful acceptance of life's like journey. And you know, she's gone through a lot. She's you know she's she's lost her parents. She's lost her family. She lost her brother in a boating accident when she you know when she was a teenager. So she's had some tragedies in her life. You know, um, she's truly a genuine and caring person. You know, she's coming to full circle in this book. So she really represents a woman that I can admire. And also another character that is very, um, I think people will go, grow to like is Doreen. She might seem like she's a very small part in the book, but Car Doreen is the, is the local hairdresser and she's has a very vulnerable character and she grows in the book. In this book, Doreen takes on a whole different resurgence of growth. And it's just, I love the way she ends, the way, the way she is at the end of the book. I love the way that authors go about creating characters. Did you have all of these characters in mind, maybe written down with their, their, their personality traits, that type of thing? Or did sort of this evolve as you were writing the book? Well, sometimes what I actually have done is, and, and sometimes I'll do this, I'll look at, I mean, I'm really into astrology too. So sometimes I'll look at different astrological signs and pick up some traits that I like from certain signs. Yes. And I do that a lot, actually. But I do usually do a format, an outline of the character's personality traits, their hair color, their, you know, their eyes, their stature, you know, uh, how they're dressed to give me a feel of like the kind of person they are. And you do such a nice job in the book, Broken Promises, Book Two, Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles, by giving us characters that, that we understand and you don't overwhelm us with characters. Sometimes as you're reading a book, you need to sit there with a legal pad to keep track of all the characters that have been introduced. What's the challenge in knowing, okay, I want to have a diversity of characters here because they're all bringing something important to my story, but I don't want to overwhelm the reader with, with too many characters. How do you, how do you balance that? Well, Interestingly enough, that that is a challenge sometimes when you're writing because you you sometimes actually do start to then you add in like a few extra characters and sometimes they're just like kind of like walk-ons maybe the the yes. like the the waitress you know in the cafe you know you don't want to start focusing too much but you want to get a little background about that person and I have a tendency to do that and I I get a little concerned myself I don't want to overwhelm exactly with too many characters so you you have to kind of keep in mind like 
who are your main characters and where do you want to go with them? So I do, you do try to limit yourself to some extent with, you know, the character stories and just so that the, so the reader doesn't get too, too confused. Like you're saying, I mean, I don't want to confuse my readers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got Sometimes the afraid that I I'm thinking, Oh my goodness, do I have too many characters in my book? <laughs> no, you found the right formula. The, uh, the formula is uh, featured in the book, broken promises book two secrets, lies and puzzles. Joyce Francis, our guest on the program at uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the usual places. Who's the main demographic, the audience that you think will really enjoy broken promises? Well, um, I think that it being that it's a romance murder mystery, I think that it would probably attract more women of all age groups. But I think that men would also find the book uh, interesting and kind of intriguing. So I, I hope that men will pick it up as well to become, you know, my fans. You know, I think that uh, I think men would also enjoy the book. Well, you know, that that's true. And sometimes when you ask that, it's everybody wants to put something in a box now. It has to be formatted. It has to be in a particular genre. And uh, this is just a book that everybody can can relax, can read and enjoy. And there are actually some messages in the book as well. What message, what takeaway do you hope people have other than the pure enjoyment of reading it uh, uh, from Broken Promises? Uh, the power of love, forgiveness and honesty always prevail in the end. I really think that those are my messages for the reader. Yeah, and, and it does come out as you're reading. How long did it take you to write Broken Promises book two? Was this a long process? You, you mentioned the first book was short. Was this, the second book easier to write? Well, interestingly enough, I had intended the second book to be done many years ago and uh, within a two-year time frame. However, with life and working full-time, I didn't really have the time, you know, to really focus on the book. So I kind of set it on the back shelf and said, I'll get back to it. So it was like 40% done years ago. And then when COVID happened in March, the company that I worked for, we went part-time in May. So from May to July, I basically finished the book. I was working on it literally like every night, all weekends, all my weekends, <laughs> every second, every spare moment I had, I would be writing. So it, it, I would say that it probably took me about a year and a half for the completion process, at least I would say about a year and a half. What is that? And maybe advice for people who would like to write, but real life interferes from time to time, doesn't it? It takes precedent. You, you've got a job, you, you know, family, you've got friends, you've got obligations. How difficult is it to write during that period? And I'm talking about from a standpoint where, okay, you just get going. Joyce is sitting there at the computer and you've got a couple of thoughts. You've got uh, uh, chapters that you're writing and all of a sudden you got to stop for three, four days because of real life. How difficult is it to keep, to, to keep that flow going when it's intermittent like that? You have to stay focused. You have to, you know, put your phone away in the charger. Don't look at your phone, you know, Get away, all the distractions, you know, I'm serious. I mean, if you want to write, you really have to stay focused and you have to set aside the time. I know there has been times when I wake up in the middle of the night with ideas and I literally pop out of bed and I, start, <laughs> I, mean, I do, and I start writing them down because if you don't write those ideas down right away, you'll forget them. And, and I, I really think that that's important. So if you get an idea, you should start jotting it down, even if it's on your cell phone and your notes and your phone. I've done that many times. I get an idea like wherever I am and I'm going, oh my goodness, I got to write this down. I could see a billboard and I get an idea. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and sometimes all it takes is to write down a word or a couple of words and you can recall then later. It doesn't have to be like 14 paragraphs you're writing, just that concept that will come back to you. People always talk about how do you get over uh, writer's block? And I always find it interesting to look at the the other side of that. What happens when, boy, you're really in a flow? Again, as I mentioned, you're there, ideas are coming. Is it difficult to shut it off when it's time for sleep or I need to be at work now or I have someplace I have to be? How difficult is it? I would think your mind would be working 24-7 once you get in that groove. Yeah, that's true. However, you do also know, I mean, I know for myself, I I know when I have to put it aside and stop, you know, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just like that, you know, I mean, I know that I have other obligations and other things to do. So I'll just stop at a point and, and then I pick up, let's say the next night or something or the next day. I mean, I, I, I pretty much have done it that way and it's worked for me very well. I haven't really had a problem doing that. You know, I'm a very focused person 
and org and I'm extremely organized. <laughs> I think being an organized is really the key. Well, I was going to say you've got to, the attributes of a good writer. You're focused and and organized. The, those are two that will go to the top of the list as you were putting the list down of what makes a a, a good writer and a good story is very important as well. And you have that, Joyce Francis, our guest on the program. Uh, the book is Broken Promises, Book Two, Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles. I'm going to ask you about Book Three in a second, but when you started what turned out to be Book One, did you know this was going to be a trilogy? Was that your idea as you started, or did it just happen as you were writing Book One? It's like, okay, I really need to, uh, I like Julie, I need to have more of a story with her. I always knew it was going to be a trilogy. That was my original intent when I started writing the story. Yeah, it was always going to be a trilogy. And book- I knew that. And I, and actually, interestingly enough, when I finished book three, I think it's almost I could continue because there's a lot of mini plots in this book and a lot of other characters that I could fo- focus on and create other stories um, from. You know, And that's something else that I that I think about doing eventually. Maybe, you know, I mean, I, I know that, like I say, I'm working on book three now. And but the characters just. I don't know, just evolve. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about that. You sort of answered that. I always wonder when you go to write a trilogy, book one, okay, I still got a lot of stories to tell. I'm going to spend more time with my characters. Book two, I still got another book to tell the story. Book three, it's like sort of sayonara. I mean, at the end, it, it it's like goodbye to everybody. How difficult is that, knowing it, it's book three? And it looks like you've got thoughts going, okay, I've got like a, a, a spinoff that I can do with this character. Will it be difficult when you finally have to leave Julie behind. I think so. Yeah, she's become very part, important part of my life. I mean, I I actually feel like she's my friend. You know? <laughs> it's crazy, but you do you become very you become very close to your characters. You just don't want to see them end. You don't want to see them die. Yes. I mean, I've created these people, and it's like you want them to continue. But you know, you know, it's a story. You know, it's just a character. You know, and and you know, eventually, well, eventually, I'm just going to have to you know, find some way to, you know, close the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you coming with book three? Are you close to completion? And when can we expect to see book three? Well, I actually had started book three back in July when I finished book two. And I really haven't been working on it as as often as I'd like. So, I mean, I'm hoping that it'll be done early spring of 2022. I would say that's probably a good time frame. Who do you like to read? Who are some of the influences that uh, have sort of impacted your writing and your love of writing? I love James Patterson. Yes. I love Joanne Harris. I loved, I used to love the romance novels of Daniel Steele and Nora Roberts. <laughs> oh, yes. So you like yeah. the best. Those are people that tell great stories. And I'm sure as, as someone, as a, as another, a fellow writer, you do you learn from them as well as you're reading and you're enjoying, but maybe picking up a few tricks of the trade with some of these people? They're the best. If you're going to uh, have sort of a master's class in, in, in authors, those are the people that you would want at the, at the head of the class. Actually, you know what's interesting? I, I love their works, but I think that I know for myself when I'm writing, I don't want to read anyone else's books. I don't want to get any kind of influence. I mean, I've, I, I love their works, yes. but I would never want to, you know, get – get totally influenced that it looks like, you know, I'm, I'm like using their, I mean, of course, everybody has their own writing style. You know, my writing style is different from everybody, you know, everyone else's. We all have their own style of writing. I, I haven't really read any late, any books lately because I write. And I think that that's one of the things I try not to do when I'm writing. I, I kind of take myself away from reading other people's novels. But in the past, when I have read a lot, those were my favorite writers and I just love them. I just, they, I, I just have so much respect for the work that they've done. You know, it's interesting because you can be, be, be really a fan of someone, but when that becomes where they're influencing whatever art form you're, you're engaging in, that's difficult because you don't want to be, you know, uh, Nora Roberts too, do you? You want to be Joyce Francis one and you, you've done so well with your writing. This book is receiving rave reviews and uh, it's Broken Promises, book two, Secrets, Lies and Puzzles by Joyce Francis. You'll find the book available at Amazon, all the usual places. If you go to 
our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You'll be able to uh, link on to Joyce's page on Amazon, get information on this and the other books as well. And the video version of this interview you'll find at, at YouTube. You can just uh, Joyce Francis, F-R-A-N-C-E-S, or you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, pull up the, hit the video tab, and our YouTube page will come up with the video on as well. Joyce, this has been fun. Congratulations on the success of Broken Promises, book two. Thank you for spending some time talking about it. Look forward to having this opportunity when we're uh, talking about book three. Thank you for being with us. And thank you, for Rick, for having me today. This has been a wonderful, wonderful interview, and I've really appreciated your time. It's been really fun. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, and it's been our pleasure. Joyce Francis, the book is Broken Promises, book two, Secrets, Lies, and Puzzles. You'll find information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.